Hey guys, Psyche here with my edgy anxiety jumper, and today I want to talk about the trap of being way too strong in Dead by Daylight. Now you might notice my b-roll is Scott Jund, and that's because I've been a little bit too sick recently to play Dead by Daylight, but I really wanted to make this video. Over the past couple of years, people have been saying that the nurse might be a little too strong, or the Blight add-ons might need some fine-tuning, but I just don't understand how Trapper keeps getting left off these lists. For those of you that don't know, the Trapper is basically the original killer in Dead by Daylight, he moves at 115%, has a 32 meter terror radius, like most of the other killers, and his power allows him to pick up traps that spawn on the map and set them at any, almost any location. And if a survivor steps in them, they immediately take a health state of damage and can't move for what feels like 4 million years. Let's talk about the power first. The trapper can carry two of these traps at the same time and can place these traps virtually anywhere, with the exception of right beside a hook, beside a generator, or within 1.5 meters of another trap. But that's it. Other than that, he can place them at any window, so you can no longer vault it. He can place them in any loop, so that you can no longer use that loop. He can even place them at every entrance to, sh to shack, just to prevent you saving someone who's in the shack basement. If that's not enough, when setting traps, Killer also gets haste for 5 seconds after setting each one, making him a 120% movement speed killer. Now, a survivor that does get caught in a trap has some options. They can take a chance to escape, or if another survivor is nearby, they can come and rescue that survivor. However, these options aren't good for a myriad of reasons. Firstly, if you step in a trap and you try to escape on your own, it takes you almost 2 seconds to try and escape, and you have a 16% chance of actually freeing yourself. And if you do free yourself, you've still taken a health state worth of damage. Like, Behaviour did slightly nerf the trapper so that if you aren't able to get a lucky roll on your RNG and you're still in the trap after 5 escape attempts, you will escape on your 6th attempt. However, by that time, you've wasted almost 12 seconds and any killer worth their salt is going to have either pressured other survivors or crossed the map with his normal movement speed and downed you within that time. Secondly, let's say that you step in a trap and decide to wait for another survivor to come save you. You are going to be in that trap forever. I've always said the most efficient thing that good survivors can do is split up on gens. So if you step in a trap near your gen and there's no other survivors near you, then you're fucked. And if there are other survivors near you, then they're not being efficient on gens, so you're fucked either way. Survivors can disable traps that they see placed on the ground, but you can't even call that counterplay. The survivor needs to see the trap, get close to the trap, and then spend three and a half seconds disarming it, all more time that isn't being spent working on gens. Not to mention that if the killer is running certain add-ons, you'll just lose a health state for disarming the trap anyway. This brings me to his add-ons, and I honestly can't understand why behavior has not nerfed or reworked some of these, as they are some of the dumbest, most busted shit to ever exist in Dead by Daylight. I'm not going to go through them all, but I do want to speak on his strongest add-ons, which are the Bloody Coil, the Iridescent Stone, and the Honing Stone. The Bloody Coil, as I mentioned earlier, is an add-on that just injures you if you disarm a trap. 3.5 seconds to disarm a trap so that you can take a health state of damage. For reference, someone else healing you takes about 16 seconds, so the time efficiency here is ridiculous for the killer just to spend a couple more seconds to rearm that trap. Now, the Uriadescent Stone automatically arms a random trap every 30 seconds, so you just get your power for free every 30 seconds. Like, a survivor could disarm the trap and 30 seconds later step in that very same trap because they thought that area was safe. Finally, the Honing Stone. Oh yeah? Sorry, my little chonk thinks it's dinner time. Uh, so the Honing Stone. This add-on activates when a survivor who is caught in a trap actually manages to free themselves. But instead of running away injured, you get to go straight into the dying state. There's no chase, no killer interaction, nothing. It effectively lets survivors who have been caught in a, in a trap take six chances to bleed out on the ground. I just don't know how Behaviour thought this add-on was even okay. There's also add-ons that make the traps take longer to disarm or escape from, and ones that make the traps harder to see, or allows the killer to carry more of them. Not to mention the darker cosmetics that this killer has access to, allowing him to be stealthier than intended. The most fun part of Dead by Daylight is the chase, the killer interaction. No survivor wants to spend 5 minutes hitting generator skill checks just to open a gate and leave. Now, there are killers that can get hits faster and more efficiently, like Blight, but that's different. That requires a chase, it requires skill expression, and it also allows you to use things like perks, pallets, windows, all of which the trapper's power just does not let you use. You simply step in a trap, and you're either put into the injured or the dying state. I've said time and time again that being guaranteed a hit in a video game is bad game design. 
And like, honestly, at this point, I'm not even sure what a survivor can do against this killer. Maybe get better eyes. But that's it. I'm curious to hear what you guys think. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Ah.